like this video on this Eagles Vikings game from 35 years ago? Then join me tonight when the Eagles and Vikings play each other on Thursday Night Football, where we'll be doing live play by play and commentary about the game itself. And now, on with our feature presentation. October 1st, 1988. It's week four of the NFL season, and we've got an NFC battle on our hands over at the Metrodome between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings. For the main team in our story, this is a pretty important game, as through three weeks, they've gotten off to a bit of a slow start, finding themselves at 1-2 and, and having dropped their last two games against Cincinnati and Washington. Especially back in 1988, when there were five teams that made the playoffs in each conference, you did not want to drop to 1-3 and three through the first quarter of the season. The previous year, in 1987, of the 10 teams in the playoffs, all of them were at least 500 after the first four games. In 1986, all 10 playoff teams were 500 or better after four games, and the same held true in 1985 and in 1984. The last four years, of the 40 teams to make the playoffs, all 40 of them did not have a losing record after four games. So for the Eagles, this felt like an all-important game. Lose this one and drop to one and three, and you're in some trouble. It was not going to be easy. Going on the road to play the Vikings, the defending NFC Championship finalists, was never an easy task. But it felt like a necessary one. Because otherwise, the Eagles would have to dig themselves out of quite the hole to salvage their season. The bad news for Philly is that they find themselves down 10-0 after 10 minutes after struggling offensively and after an Alfred Anderson touchdown run on Minnesota's opening drive, followed by a chip shot field goal, gave Minnesota an offensive spark and an early lead. The good news, though, is that there's plenty of time left, and the Eagles eventually mount a nice drive in the second quarter. On third and seven, Cunningham throws an 18-yard pass to the always reliable Mike Quick to pick up a first down. This is followed by a 12-yard run by Keith Byers to give the Eagles some very good field position, and is eventually followed by a one-yard touchdown run by the goal line by Byers to cut the game to 10-7. And Philly's fortunes turn even more following a fumble recovery. Now, you be the judge as to whether this was even a catch in the first place, as I definitely think under today's rules, this is an incomplete pass. There was no football move to speak of. But regardless, with five minutes left in the first half, following the fumble recovery by Byron Evans, the Eagles have a chance to tie the game, or even take the lead. All the momentum is now on Philly's side, as the complexion of this game has flipped. On first down, Cunningham gives it to Byers, who doesn't have a ton of room, and goes out of bounds after a gain of two. Now, on second down, Cunningham tries to connect on a fly route down the sideline with Quick, but the pass falls incomplete. However, even if it was complete, it would not have counted, as the referee calls pass interference on the offense. Once again, you be the judge as to whether or not Quick actually committed pass interference here, but the ref said that his arm was extended, constituting a push-off. This brings up 2nd and 18. Alright, you're behind schedule, but you still got two plays to get 18 yards. So come on, buddy Ryan. Let's see what your offense has drawn up for this spot. Again, it doesn't seem to be in the spirit. A quick kick by Cunningham. Randall Cunningham with a quick kick with the Vikings up on the line, and it goes out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Oh, come on, editor. You're getting sloppy again. I'm this close to firing you. You know that, right? I told you to give me the second down play. This is very clearly the fourth down play. No one's punting on second down. Why can't you do what I ask of you and get me the play that the Eagles called on second down? Why can't you... Oh no. Don't even tell me. Don't even tell me. Don't even tell, Don't even tell me the Eagles punted the ball on second down! I'm sorry! What?! Again, it doesn't seem to be in the spirit. A quick kick by Cunningham. Randall Cunningham with a quick kick with the Vikings up on the line and it goes out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. 
This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Philadelphia Eagles head coach Buddy Ryan. There are some coaches that innovate the game in ways where, to be honest, it's tough to imagine the sport without it. Bill Walsh with the West Coast offense. Don Coryell with the Air Coryell offense. And look, maybe Buddy Ryan was ahead of his time. Maybe someone is watching this video 200 years down the road and is wondering why the heck this was ever seen as a controversial decision at the time. Because maybe, putting the ball on second down will at some point become an optimal strategy. When the NFL team based on the colony on Mars win Super Bowl 304 through its revolutionary idea of putting on second down, we'll look back at Buddy Ryan as a genius ahead of his time. But today is not that day. Oh no, today is definitely not that day. So with that being said, let's take a look at why putting the ball on 2nd and 18 is a really bad idea. I mean, do I even need to say anything else? Buddy Ryan called a freaking putt on 2nd and 18. How does it possibly get any worse than that? Look, a punt is, in essence, a surrender. Anytime you punt the ball, you are surrendering on the drive. Barring anything crazy, you will never be able to score on a punt. And most of the time, teams score when they're on offense. The object of the game is to score more points than your opponent. How you do that is up to you. But that's what the game boils down to at the end of the day. When you punt the football, you are surrendering on that drive. You are saying... I don't trust our offense to pick up the requisite yardage needed to convert and move the chains. And the risk of giving you great field position so that you can score if we fail is too high. So we're going to pump the ball back to you guys, concede this drive, and try and play the long game. And try to get on the next drive with a new set of downs and maybe better field position too. That's what a punt is. You're surrendering in the short term to play the long game. Which is why a punt makes complete sense on 4th down, and why it is often an optimal strategy in that situation. And it's exactly why a punt on freaking 2nd down does not make any sense whatsoever! By punting on 2nd and 18, you are saying, We surrender. We don't trust our offense to pick up 18 yards in 2 plays, and average 9 yards per play. Even though we literally have nothing to lose. So we're just going to give it back to you for some reason. So you know what? Instead of beating a dead horse and harping on the obvious, let's just break down what Buddy Ryan said after the game about why he opted to have Randall Cunningham try a quick kick here in this situation and punt the ball. As Ryan said, because it was second at about 90. Eight many 58-yard plays in this business. So don't give me any BS about that call. Oh, but I will, buddy. I absolutely will. First off, it was not second at about 90. This was not like what you tried two years ago with the quick kick on second and 40. This was second and 18. You needed nine yards per play to get the first down, and you had nothing to lose by doing so. Want to know what the worst case scenario ultimately is if you try and pick up the first down and don't get it? Bringing up fourth down? You give the ball back to Minnesota. Want to know what the best case scenario is if you punt the ball on second down? You give the ball back to Minnesota! You might as well at least try to draw something up, especially when you need literally 9 yards per play. I'm not saying 9 yards per play is easy. In a second and 18 situation, if you ask me who has the upper hand, I'm usually going to say the defense. But it is absolutely doable. By that logic, if you get no yards on your first and 10 play since it's a stuffed run, and your second and 10 play goes nowhere because the pass ball is incomplete, you might as well just pump the ball on third and 10, since you need to pick up 10 yards, and that's more than the 9 yards per play you need on second and 18. No, there are not many 58 yard plays in this business, but there are a crap ton of 9 yard plays, and if you don't have any 9 yard plays in your playbook, then you need to be relieved of your duties. 
especially since you literally just called a deep shot to Mike Quick on your very last play that would have been more than sufficient. And especially since you converted a third and rather long on your last drive as well. But you know what? Maybe you're right. You know this team better than I do. Maybe the Eagles had no shot at picking up the first down on second and 18. Come to think of it, I don't know of any instances in NFL history or any instances that are applicable to you where a team converted on second and 18. In fact, the last time a team converted on second and 18, or at the very least, made it a third unmanageable and made up the yardage, was a long time ago. Because for Buddy Ryan and company, you have to go all the way back to, oh, I don't know, last freaking week! Seriously! This game took place in week 4 on October 1st. The previous week, in week 3, on September 25th, at RFK Stadium, Philadelphia took on Washington. Not once, but twice, they were faced with a 2nd and 18 situation. Let's jump to this play in the second quarter. First down, and Randall Cunningham gets sacked for a loss of 8. Well, that sucks. So you would think that the Eagles would pump the ball here, right? Nope. Because on 2nd and 18, Cunningham dropped back and hit his tight end, Keith Jackson, over the middle for a gain of 10 to bring up 3rd and 8. Bringing up a 3rd and manageable, and going above the average that you need in terms of yards for plays that convert. See? It's doable! And it happened again in the 4th quarter! 1st down, and Randall Cunningham in an all-too-familiar story with him in the 80s, gets sapped, bringing up a nearly impossible 2nd and 18 situation. But you know what's crazy? The Eagles didn't send their freaking punting team on the field! Instead, they continued to play offense. I know, that's revolutionary. And on the very next play, oh my god, what do you know? Cunningham hits wide receiver Mike Quick over the middle for a gain of 20, and a 1st down. So nobody... This was not 2nd and 90. This was 2nd and 18. A situation that is more than doable. A situation that teams find themselves in every week. And it's a situation that you found yourself in multiple times the previous week. And a situation that by calling basic plays, you salvage multiple times. Think of all the things that can happen in the ensuing two plays when you have 2nd and 18. You get a pass for a 20 plus yard gain especially since Cunningham has a cannon of an arm. You get two short passes to pick up the first. You can get Cunningham to step up in the pocket or roll out and run and pick up some yards for the first. Heck, remember that defensively, a ton of penalties, like pass interference, illegal contact, defensive holding, or hands to the face, result in an automatic first down. And you decide, in the second quarter of a highly manageable situation, to punt the ball away? I honestly don't know what to say to that. Truly, I, I don't. I'm speechless. I know Buddy Ryan said during the 1986 preseason that quick kicking was going to be a part of this offense, saying, if you've got 20 to go on your own 20, I'd rather kick it out of the shotgun and quick kick it on third down. I know they'll do it, but we really don't care. If it's the thing to do, we'll do it. But needing 9 over a 2-play average, and you're going to do that? And people wonder why Buddy Ryan was such a failure as a head coach. Now, this might come as a surprise to you, but since this play happened 35 years ago, there has not been another pun on second down. I know, shocking, right? I can't believe no other team has tried this absolutely innovative strategy, but the fact that no one has done it in the last 35 years either means that Buddy Ryan is truly ahead of his time, or he's just that stupid. And I'm going to go with the latter. I'll give Buddy Ryan and the Eagles this much, though. At least they didn't call a running play on 2nd and 15. In overtime, on Monday Night Football, we're only that one. So what do we learn from all of this? Don't punt the freaking football on freaking 2nd down! If you have 2nd down, and you have 18 yards to go, meaning you need to average 9 yards per play without even factoring in the possibility of a defensive penalty giving you the automatic first down, there are literally 10,000 other things you can do besides punting the ball and automatically surrendering and giving it back to the opposition. 
if you literally stayed ahead of schedule on multiple occasions when you did this last week, and if you have a quarterback with a cannon of an arm who can run, and if conversions on 2nd and 18 are not exactly a once in a blue moon thing, and you have nothing to lose by letting the downs play out and then putting on 4th if necessary, there is no reason to punt the football here. None at all. God bless Buddy Ball. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.